Welcome everyone to this daily devotional for Monday, July 13th. I'm Mark Myers, the Associate Pastor at the United Methodist Church of New Lenox. I'm glad you've joined me today and I just ask that you take a moment, take a breath, gather your thoughts and your emotions, uh, grab your Bible, some prayer beads, uh, light a candle, do something sensory, just to bring you away from whatever's going on in your week as you start a new week. So you can just focus a little bit on God and on neighbor. Hear the invocation where we invite God into this time and place. O oh God, prepare us through the activity and presence of the Spirit to come before you with worth and to ask you rightly to enlighten our understanding, purify our every desire, quicken our wills, into instant obedience to the word. Strengthen every right purpose. Direct this hour of worship to magnify your name, to the enduring good of all of us, your children and servants, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our psalm this week is a, is a little bit of a longer one, so we'll split it up over the week. Psalm 37, just the first few verses today. The Psalm of David. Don't get upset over evildoers. Don't be jealous of those who do wrong. Because they will fade fast like grass. They'll wither like green vegetables. Trust the Lord and do good. Live in the land and farm faithfulness. Enjoy the Lord. And the Lord will give you what your heart asks. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust him. And he will act and make your righteousness shine like the dawn. Your justice like high noon. Be still before the Lord. And wait for him. Don't get upset. When someone gets ahead. Someone who invents evil schemes. God bless the reading of the psalm today. It's great advice to wait on the Lord, to not be obsessed. And I'm not just talking about in the context of maybe what David was going through, dealing with truly evil people surrounding him, scheming against him. But I'm not encouraging us to be paranoid. I think in all situations, when we obsess over the other, over what someone else is doing, what someone else is feeling, thinking, experiencing in a way that is negative for us. Now, if we have compassion for people, that's different. But when we're, I mean, just personally, right? When, when you are so worried about what someone else is thinking about you, maybe even a loved one, that you start feeling anxious and afraid and fearful, paranoid, jealous, etc. Envious, obviously. What good does that do you? Stand in the Lord. I, I love the imagery of, you know, go into the field and farm faithfulness. Have you ever thought about that? Your daily devotion, your daily work as going into the field, as farming, as planting, as harvesting, as working your spiritual land, your spiritual life, growing towards God and love of God and love of neighbor. Our other scripture reading is also from the book of Psalms. It's Psalm 25, and I'll read it in its entirety. Another Psalm of David, this whole section is attributed to King David. I offer my life to you, Lord. My God, I trust you. Please don't let me be put to shame. Don't let my enemies rejoice over me. For that matter, don't let anyone who hopes in you be put to shame. Instead, let those who are treacherous without excuse be put to shame. Make your ways known to me, Lord. 
Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. Teach it to me because you are the God who saves me. I put my hope in you all day long. Lord, remember your compassion and faithful love. They are forever. Don't remember the sins of my youth or my wrongdoing. Remember me only according to your faithful love. For the sake of your goodness, Lord. The Lord is good and does the right thing. He teaches sinners which way they should go. God guides the weak to justice, teaching them his way. All the Lord's paths are loving and faithful. For those who keep his covenant and laws, please, for the sake of your good name, Lord, forgive my sins, which are many. Where are the ones who honor the Lord? God will teach them which path to take. They will live a good life. And their descendants will possess the land. The Lord counsels those who honor him. He makes covenant known to them. My eyes are always looking to the Lord because he will free my feet from the net. Turn to me, God. Have mercy on me because I am alone and suffering. My heart's trouble keeps getting bigger. Set me free from my distress. Look at my suffering and trouble. Forgive all my sins. Look at how many enemies I have and how violently they hate me. Please protect my life. Deliver me. Don't let me be put to shame because I take refuge in you. Let integrity and virtue guard me because I hope in you. Please, God, save Israel from all its troubles. May God bless the reading of the scripture and the Psalms this day. This is a psalm of uh, confession, among other things. Most psalms are kind of multi-part, but there's definitely a confession theme where we're coming to God with our troubles, our problems, the things we've done wrong, and asking for forgiveness. And this is an essential part of our spiritual walk every single day to come to God with whatever we've done, whatever we've wronged, whatever way we've gotten away from God by not loving God, by not loving our neighbors, by hurting the people we love, even the people closest to us, and acknowledging in humility that we are continuously making mistakes, but that we are working with God's help and encouragement towards a perfect love, the love that Christ shared with us, showed us, and can enable within us. That's the good news of this and almost every story that God enables us to grow in love through Jesus Christ. I encourage you, friends, to do the same. Grow in love. Don't be afraid to admit when you are wrong. And don't be afraid to admit that you don't have all the answers, that you're going on to perfection and maybe haven't made it there yet. Today's reading comes from Henry Nouwen, the uh, wonderful spiritual writer and theologian. This is from his work, A Cry for Mercy. I think I have this, or will have it on my shelf once I unpack my office. I called you, O Lord, from my quiet darkness. Show me your mercy and love. Let me see your face, hear your voice. Touch the hem of your cloak. I want to love you, be with you, speak to you, and simply stand in your presence. But I cannot make it happen. Pressing my eyes against my hands is not praying, and reading about your presence is not living in it. But there is that moment in which you will come to me, as you did your fearful disciples, and say, Do not be afraid. It is I. Let that moment come soon, O Lord. And if you want to delay it, then make me patient. May God bless the reading from Henry today. What beautiful reminders. We can learn all we want. We can read the Bible till we're blue in the face. We can study and have doctoral degrees in theology and philosophy and world thought and knowledge and still don't know God. We can grow up in church, go to church all our life, serve on committees, sing in the choir, etc., etc., and still not know God. 
or it's in the unexpected moment. When you're afraid and behind closed doors, as Henry is talking about the disciples, where God comes, Christ comes in your midst and says, do not be afraid unexpectedly. Do not be afraid. And it's in those unexpected moments where we have a little bit more understanding of where God's calling us and how God is interacting with us. And we don't all have it in the same way and all the same experiences. That's why we get together and we share our collective experiences because they're all different. And each of us has a very unique experience and an experience that may be like someone else's that can help them understand what's going on. And so we can seek the Lord and find the Lord. But we can also allow God to come into our lives in unexpected moments. And as Henry reminds us, we can also be patient. And let God work in God's time, in God's moments. Because when God reveals God's self to us in God's time, it certainly is more powerful and real and profound than when we force God into our time and space. Friends, let us join together in prayer. We come today praying for those who are seeking. Those who are seeking, maybe they don't even know, but we talk about that God-shaped hole in our hearts talk about prevenient grace in the United Methodist Church, this idea that God is calling you, that you've been imbued with grace, God is calling you home. And we believe all people experience that. And often people try to fill that hole, fill that, uh, or, or answer that call in ways that aren't helpful, in ways that are hurtful, in ways that are destructive. And so... Our call as Christians is to go, therefore, and make disciples. That means sharing good news, and that means offering hope, and that means allowing people to experience that love for themselves, walking with them as they come face-to-face with Christ. So let's pray for those who are seeking, those who are lost, those who are alone, those who need God's love. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the ways in which you have come into our world. In the beginning, as you created and swept over the dark seas, in the times of the ancient humans who experienced you through miracles and through exile and exodus, through the law and the prophets, We thank you for the incarnation where you became one of us and lived among us in Jesus Christ, died and rose again, ascended into heaven, and will come again for us. We thank you for all the moments in our days and lives and years and the experiences of our church and churches throughout history where we have come to encounter you. Now let us keep our eyes and our hearts and our minds on those lost sheep, those who are seeking those who have not yet fully understand what they're seeking, those who are filling that hole with everything and anything they can in search for you, even though they may not know your name. Allow us to proclaim your name, to share your love and good news wherever we go and whatever we do, whatever we say. We pray this in your holy name and pray the prayer your son Jesus Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, until tomorrow I leave you with this benediction. Live today in Christ's presence, remembering he is near and will sustain you as you serve in his name. Amen. Goodbye.